All right, gonna tie one of my most uh, simple spay flies here. It's a really fast and easy one, but really effective. We're gonna use a tungsten bottle tube. Okay, it's just a bottle tube with a few grooves in the back. Nice and heavy, of course, because it's tungsten. And we're gonna line it with our soft liner tube. Now, the problem is the diameter on these a little bit tight. So I'm gonna show a little trick here. I'm gonna take our regular soft liner tube and we're just going to pull it, stretch it. Once you stretch it, just give it a cut on the end. And you'll notice it's way thinner now at the end, and you can line almost any tube now. I'll take my bottle and just thread it like a needle. Pull it through. So you now have a liner tube that fits absolutely snugly in there. It's no problems at all. We'll trim the back edge again, one or two millimeters. And we'll trim the front edge as well. One or two millimeters left over so we can burn it. Okay, so you can see there. You definitely want to have the overlap in the front and the back so that when we burn it, it will roll back up on itself. All right, we'll just put a little flame to it now, just to the edges, not right in it, of course. And it'll curl up on itself, nice and tight. Do the other side. Right, there we go. Just give it a second or two to cool before we put it on the mandrel, or pardon me, on the uh, taper pin today. Right. And we'll just thread it on. And again, putting pressure until it stops, but not so it gets jammed. All right, we'll start with our black thread, and I'm gonna these bottle tubes, especially these tungsten ones. They have they have the grooves. Some people like to paint them. Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Sometimes I'll start even further back and actually start tying in one of the grooves, which is fine too. I mean the the mid. The biggest reason we're using tungsten is just for the weight. Uh, I'll tie on the back and we'll start to fly. Alright, we're quite lucky in this shop because uh, we have a lot of heron kicking around. Uh, we originally designed this fly using bird fur from Whitting. And you can see if I just pluck one of these bird fur feathers off, and this is nice stuff too, but uh, definitely when you compare it to heron, some huge differences. So. Here we have the bird fur, and you can see it's got nice, quite nice barbs. Very light though. So there's bird fur, and here's actual gray hair that's been dyed a silver block, Dr. Blue. So you can see there's way more structure to this feather. Uh, it still have the incredibly long barbs, but it's a pretty rigid feather that really stands up to use. Uh, so we're gonna use the hair instead of the bird fur. We'll strip it down, not strip it down, but we'll just kind of roll back the fibers. We want to get most of the fibers free from the stem. Okay, just like that. We'll tie it in by the tip. To zoom here in here a bit. Okay, and we'll actually pull the tip back too, and the tip can be part of the spay feather as well. If it looks goofy after, we can always trim it. Okay, for the body of this fly, take a nice bright blue floss. Purple works well too, but we'll stick to blue here. And now the key to using any bottle tube is to make sure you leave enough room for that head. So we'll wrap forward, getting a nice, reasonably uniform body, especially over that last groove. Like I said, this is a really, really simple, simple spay fly. Again, we'll leave lots of room for the head here, so we don't want to go any further than that.
We'll cut off the extra extra floss. Okay, just make sure everything's attached there. Okay, at this point, we're just going to be palmering our spay fly, or pardon me, our spay feather, the heron. I know a lot of people say, well, there's no rib on this, so the feather's going to be kind of delicate, especially when it comes to fish teeth, and that's totally true. But to be honest with you, when I fish this, they're so fast to make these ones that we don't worry about the rib. Uh, using a rib with the heron is kind of a nightmare. Uh, on a pattern that's going to take a lot more time and a lot more effort, it's not really a big deal. But for a quick one like this, we don't even worry about the rib. Okay, we'll secure it in there. We'll just fold everything back. You can see what a wonderful job of that gray heron does as a spay feather. So nothing touches it for sure. All right, and like I said, this feather or this uh, fly is a really simple one. Uh, we're already at the collar, and we're going to put a collar of blue guinea on. And we'll just pull back the fibers again and tie this in from the tip. Just like that. Hey, okay, now we're ready to spin the uh, guinea. We want to try and get probably four or five wraps with this if we can and we'll pull back the rest of the fibers and make them part of the wing as well And just start building up a nice head. And we'll just spin it around, make sure everything looks pretty uniform. Make sure we got a nice coating on that head. Coating of thread, I should say. And the idea on this fly is to make it look quite sparse. By no means is this a fully dressed spay fly or anything like that. I think we'll keep it like that. Just comb it out and take a look at it. And we of course like to throw in jungle cock when we have it. And I found this pattern works a lot better. At least in my head it works a lot better. When you put the jungle cock on quite long. I mean most, most flies of course would have the jungle cock just coming off the cheek like that. We like to put it further back like that. Almost almost to represent some eyes on a shrimp pattern. But again, whether the fish notice, I'm not sure. And I'll just spin it one more time to make sure everything looks okay. okay and on this fly, I like to also put a little bit of a topping on it. This is our uh, our burnt ostrich that we offer. It's kind of like a Rhea substitute. It's got a little bit more bulk than Rhea. But we like to put just, we almost use it kind of like an overwing over the top. So we take about, I don't know, I guess about six or seven fibers. And this just kind of gives it a nice topping right on the right on top of that jungle cock.
Oops. And I like to put a little topping on this fly. It's almost like an overwing. We use our our burnt ostrich product. It's kind of a Rhea substitute. Um, very similar to Rhea, but a little bit more bulk to it. It take probably about seven or eight barbs. And at this point, I like to give them a little bit of just a little bit of wetness from my mouth, without licking them, of course. Just so they stay together better. And of course, once I hit the water, it's gonna be it's gonna be all matted together anyway. We'll just tie these in. I'm spinning a little bit here, no big deal. We're just ready to tie off anyway. Alright, so that's the pattern. Like I said, it's a really basic fly. One of our biggest producers, though, especially in the winter. A uh, very slight pattern, but lots of weight. Really punches down quick. Just finish it with some nail polish. And that's it. Ready to go.